Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today, my granddaughter and I are just showing you this wooden tray that we want to do over. It's a Teleflora tray, and I it was just plain brown, and I decided to spray paint it all black as a base for another color that I want to put over the top of it. So this is Vaseline, and I'm just putting it around the edges where I don't want the paint to stick. So when I'm done painting this moss color in the Waverly, I'm going to uh, wipe it back and it will be distressed without using any sandpaper. So I'm just going over this with the moss color. This is the obviously the first coat and I end up doing two coats and I'll show you what it looks like with the first coat. There we go. So you can see where some of the paint hasn't stuck and it's not very good. So I want a little bit more coverage than that. So I'm just going over it again with a second coat. It definitely uh, covers a lot better in the second coat. And you can still wipe it back and get the distressed look. So once it's all dry, I just take a rag. This isn't even wet. It's just a dry rag that I use and just wiping back the paint that did not stick because of the Vaseline that I put on the tray. And I just put it around the edges and anywhere where I thought I wanted to see um, a lot of distressing and it worked really well. It, I've used this before but I don't use it that often and I really should probably use it more because I, I like the look of it. So this is a little bit of plaster Waverly paint and I'm going to paint the bottom of this tray. I have a little bit left of my sunflower decoupage paper and people seem to really like that when I put it in my booth so I want to um, use up the rest of it on the bottom of this tray. I thought it would look cute and I had to just cut off a little bit to make it fit so I thought that would be perfect for it. I just do one coat of the plaster paint that's all it really needs. Uh, some people have asked why I do a lighter color under my decoupage paper. The reasoning is it's a darker decoupage paper and if you use a lighter color or darker color I'm sorry it will uh, just kind of bleed out and you won't really see all the detail. Using the lighter color brings out and makes it brighter uh, the backing behind the paper. So this is some Mod Podge. I'm just putting a layer of Mod Podge on there so that my decoupage paper will stay down. I'm just going to do just a little portion of it and then get my paper set and where I want it and then I can flip it back and do the rest. Doing a little bit at a time like this helps you to uh, get your paper set and I feel like it makes the wrinkles not so bad when you do it this way. I also uh, had a comment somebody or a few people had mentioned to use the saran wrap over the top so when you're, you're trying to get your bubbles and wrinkles out that it doesn't rip the paper and it works wonderfully just so you know. So now I have these little edges where I didn't quite cut the paper long enough or I painted too far in and I just want to tidy up those edges so I'm taking a little bit of that moss green paint and just lightly going along the edges to get the lighter plaster paint covered up so it all blends in together. Once that's all dry, I take a coat of Mod Podge and go over the top to seal that in. And then I use some clear spray to seal the whole piece.
My sister just added a new section in her home of a master bed and bath. And in her bathroom, she had a light bar put over the mirror. These are some kind of little extensions that you can put around the light bulbs, maybe different colors. Uh, she may have used gold instead of silver. But anyway, it came with the light bar that went over her mirror. So she asked if I had a need for them for crafting or any other sort. And I said, I see pumpkins with these. I could do some different size pumpkins. So I brought them home and immediately started to see if that would work. So I'm just taking some foam, floral foam that I got from Dollar Tree, and I'm sticking that down through the foam to get a good fill in that uh, circular shape. You could probably use uh, napkin rings as well, something like that for the same purpose. Now I have some cinnamon sticks and I cut them in half. The reason why I'm using the floral foam is to make it so I can um, stick that cinnamon stick in there and have it stay and also to make a taller uh, pumpkin and using this floral foam and that's this is how I figured out how to do it. So I'm just taking a razor blade and just trimming down uh, in a downward motion making it small to bigger from the top to bottom uh, just to shape it a little bit to make it look like a taller pumpkin and you'll see once I start wrapping it with this really cool yarn that I got from an inside yard sale uh, these colors are very Halloween fall colors so I decided I would make some pumpkins with it and you'll see the shape come through once I get it wrapped so I just got to clean up my mess a little bit. This floral foam is so messy. I'm trying to glue this piece down that I added, but it really didn't work very well. And you'll see as I, as I start to uh, wind the yarn around that it just kind of falls apart. But it will stay because of the yarn. And I'll just make sure I pull that tight as I go along. And it should stay pretty well. I did find that this metal piece was a little bit slippery for the yarn, so if I didn't keep track of uh, holding on to it really well, um, it would slide off to one side or the other. But there, as you can see, I'm just wrapping it. I did like a crisscross, and then I just keep wrapping and going around. What I'm trying to do is just cover up the inside. I was thinking of spray painting it uh, a different color like black or painting it a lighter color like tan so you couldn't see through but the yarn seems to cover it really well uh, as long as you push those pieces together and make it a nice thick uh, just roll of yarn across it. It really covers it up well. So I didn't glue in my cinnamon stick. I will later on, but the reasoning was I wasn't sure how tall my yarn was going to be, and I can pull that out a little bit and uh, make my little stem taller. But I do go and uh, back in and glue those in when I'm all done. So as I finish up wrapping at the very bottom, I just make a little spot for the end of my yarn. I cut it off and glue it down so that it will uh, stay together. I think there's going to make a really cute little um, bowl fillers. I love the colors. Very fall colors. So that first one was a taller pumpkin and I made a couple of those. This next one is going to just be the shape that it is. So it's going to be a smaller, rounder pumpkin. Um, and so I just do the same thing. I drive it down through the floral foam and just so that I can stick my cinnamon stick in there. And again, once I'm done wrapping, I will later on pull that out and uh, glue it and then stick it back in and it should stay. 
So again, wrapping around and around, and then at the bottom I change direction and just do a crisscross, and then I just start working my way around and covering up the sides. So there we go, that little one is all done. And then there's the big one, the difference there. I'm looking at them and I think they look great as bowl fillers the way they are. But I do have this raffia and sometimes I like to use it for around stems uh, and things like that. So I just make a double knot around my cinnamon stick and I uh, flatten out the edges of my raffia and then rip them so that they just kind of look ragged. And I do both sides and just uh, trim them off to the size that looks the best. And I do that to all my little pumpkins. I found this really cool bunt pan that is just perfectly distressed and old looking. So I'm not going to do a thing to it, but I was going to show you a little decor with my bowl fillers that we could do. So I'm just going to uh, take some towels that I have and stuff them down inside because I will be using pit berries and I want them to kind of stand out a little bit above the um, candle that I'm going to put in. So I put the towels in and now I'm just taking some black and tan uh, material and sticking it around there to cover it up so that you can't see them. I have just this little piece of uh, grapevine ring and see how that makes that stand out over the edges and a little bit of uh, pit berries, the fall colors. And then I have this battery light candle, just one that I have just around the house. I thought it would look good. And then there are my little bowl filler pumpkins. I changed it up a little bit if you don't like the pit berries and I added a green um, wreath and put that in there instead and then just kept my pumpkins on the top. Another indoor yard sale find is this wooden candle holder with the uh, really nice handle on it. It's a really cool nice uh, candle holder. This was around three dollars it was marked three dollars but I had a bundle deal I had bundled a bunch of stuff so I got a nice deal on everything so it was around three but less than that um, just painting this all the black color just want this to be black I did one coat on this because this black is um, this is the folk art and it is very pigmented and just covers so nicely. So that's all I needed was one coat. Then I do just a light sand around the edges and inside the bowl and just anywhere I want it distressed. Uh, also along the handle makes it uh, look really aged. Taking a little bit of E6000 and a little bit of hot glue and I'm going to glue down this glass globe that I also acquired from my sister. She did not want it anymore so I was like absolutely and I know right where I'm gonna put it. So once that was glued down a little bit and stuck I grabbed some of my Spanish moss and I'm going to glue that down around the bottom all the way around. I love using Spanish moss on some of these projects just because they make them look fuller uh, and they make your pit berries pop if that's what you use, which I am going to with this. And I just really like the look of it against the black and then the pit berries on top. So just go all the way around and I fluff it up and I'm just kind of spreading it out a little bit and cleaning up the edges. 
I have this ring of pit berries. I just cut it with some wire cutters so that I could fit it around my bowl. And then I just fluff it up and make it look like it's all one piece again. And get everything all untwisted and just fluffing. It's just a lot of fluffing and just making it look fuller. I like to use coffee beans in some of my designs. This is not beans, obviously. This is coffee grounds. Very inexpensive bag that I found. I couldn't find any beans at the time I was looking. And I just poured a 12 ounce bag into the uh, bowl and then added a candle and a rusty star down inside and it's all done. So my three fall primitive creations today. I hope that you like them. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know which one was your favorite if you have one. I appreciate you watching and have a great day.